So the newest line uh, that we've added in the alcohol ink world are alcohol pearls. Now these guys are incredibly cool. Uh, what they are, they are pearlescent alcohol ink. Okay, so I want to demo what that really means and see it never fails. Like, Can you speak about what the difference between that and the metallic ones are? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that's the whole demo. I'm going to yeah. go through exactly Perfect. what makes these unique. So these are available in kits or open stock, right? So you can pick out your colors and you can already buy them on the other side in packs. Now the thing about this ink is it is designed to dry with a pearlescent sheen. So it has a color pearl bonded to the ink. You may be thinking, well, wait a minute, that's a pearl. You already have a pearl. What makes this different than alcohol inks in a pearl mixing? Okay, a mixative. Yeah. Oh, hey, Let's get this out of here. Let's see what's in the tin. Always a surprise. There's snow cap. There's pearl. Okay. Metallic mixatives in the alcohol ink line are just a pigment and a clear liquid, which is blending solution. Okay. That's what's in a mixative. And because it's just pigment, when you used it in conjunction with alcohol inks, the dye, you would get separation. Right. Mm -hmm. Dye and pigment would get that full marbleization. The pearls in there are a completely different formulation where the pearl is designed to fuse with the ink. So when I use the alcohol pearls, I'm not going to get that separation. Mm -hmm. It's not a mixing. I'm actually getting pearlescent coverage. And you can, when you feel this paper, I know we don't have feel of vision yet. No, that would be good. Um, there is no texture to these. Unlike a mixative, that we can feel some of that pigment yeah. on the surface. So let's just go into colors because they are their own colors, but this to me was the most similar match. So this one, this is Intrigue, and this is Wild Plum. And what I wanted to show you the difference is, this is just Intrigue stamped onto Yupo. Okay, that alcohol pearl. Can you see that pearl shine on it? Mm -hmm. If not, I'm just not hitting it on the light. It's a very, very beautiful, shimmery pearl of a color. Mm -hmm. This is Wild Plum with Pearl Mixative. Right? When you add a mixative, you're going to get a total whiteout of your color because pigment dominates color. That's it. Right? So no, it doesn't matter how many layers I do, that white pigment is always going to float to the top and it's going to give me almost that whiteout. So it depends on what you're going for. And you can also see this separation. It clumps up, it builds up, but these pearls don't. So I'm just going to demo the pearls and then I'll get into different substrates. So if you just want to look through those, um, the colors are awesome. All right. So when I work with them, just going to use uh, felt. You can also use foam. If you want to use foam, you're just going to throw it away, but you can still use it. I'm going to demo on uh, Yupo. If you're not familiar with Yupo, Yupo is a synthetic paper. It's actually made of plastic, but it has that feel of paper. And you can do a lot of things on Yupo. You can watercolor and draw and stamp and do some very cool things. I love to die cut Yupo. <coughs> Because it yes. thinks it's a paper, it will die cut perfectly even with your thin dyes, and then you can make your own stencils because it's reusable. So you can take your favorite word or mixed media, cut it out, and then just use it and wipe it off because it is a waterproof paper. All right? So let's just take some colors. I think I'm just going to work with pearls to start, and then I'll throw in some other colors. These guys also have to be shaken up, okay? I like that when I work with them at home, this is how I have my pearls. Right? So in my tin, I just have my tin of pearls like this. Only reason, they just mix up quicker. Okay? When the pearl is going across, there's less of that solid area to bust up. <coughs> right? You know if you have to mix guys it. with your tins, he's yeah. just standing on the other side. And, and not because so it's, it's going to make it work or not, it's just going to be less shake time. That's the shake time. Yeah. Because if the pigment, see the pigment is all right down here, see how thick it is? But if the pigment is dispersed around here, it's not as thick. So when you mix it, it just, I don't have time for that. I mean, I even bought a little shaker. I get, I'm not gonna lie. Tim says, machine, ain't nobody got time for that. You touch the button and it takes the bottle. I guess model paint people use it, or nail polish, or something like that. The Blad Lab, Blad Lab uses it. Yeah, yep. But even that annoys me because you have to like, yeah. the ball on, push the button, and take it off. <laughs> so, yeah, just... What about a centrifuge? Put them all at the same time. Go. Somebody said that on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. like, you need to have a vibrating tray now. <laughs> <laughs> just put them in your hands and just shake them up. Because once they mix, they'll stay mixed pretty quick, right? They're not going to settle. How's it going? <laughs> hey. All right. Watching the magic. 
So there we go. We got some magic stuff going on. So the thing about pearls, I'm just gonna show that just on some UPO so you can see. Okay, it's gonna be your ink, but as it starts to dispense, you're gonna see that when it dries, you're gonna get that little pearl. Can you? Know, looks different. It, can you see it like sparkle on the top? Is that fluorescent? It's like a fluorescent this one, it's kind of a pink, but it's not a fluorescent because it has no white in it. Right? Oh, it looks so really different. See it see in person, wow. camera is different. Yeah. But make it great for you. This one is enchanted. Yeah. Enchanted. This is intrigue. I'm going to throw on a little bit of intrigue. Let's take this one. Let's take some sublime. All right. You did that and you got mud. Well, you know, that's just how it is. The only thing is with the mix it is we'd get that little ridge and then we could yeah. put foil on it. I could use Correct. my scrap. But you can I can still, still do that. that. Yeah, Blending that's true. That. That's right. Okay, I'm just going to throw in some colors just so you can start seeing that these are going to react the same way alcohol needs to do. Would I normally blend these colors together? No, but for some crazy reason, they're going to work. And you can see as I do that, can you see them just sparkle and dance? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. awesome. On the paper? <laughs> so different. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. That's the pearl. You're going to get kind of this little, I don't know, sizzling magic, if you will. <laughs> but what I found as I use these is, like with the oxide spray, I prefer to take this and use it in conjunction with my inks. I think that you just get more depth that way. Mm -hmm. So not everything has this shine mm -hmm. of pearl. We're able to still go in with some inks. We can shake them on or we can go in and we can add them to our ink tool. I was looking for my little baby blending solution because they have a little baby blending solution now. They have a little oh. mini one. It's the same thing. It's just, so I guess, travel size. Absolutely. They are alcohol inks. They're just pearlescent. So everything that you know and you do with inks, we can do with pearls. It's insanely like give you a little bit of, give you a little space here. I want you to stop and I want you to keep going. It's, yeah, I know. It's messed like, up. That's the thing about alcohol ink. When you, when you just throw it on there and you don't overthink the ink like magic happens like blends that you wouldn't think that you love all of a sudden yeah. it's like oh my gosh stop it right now just want to lick it it's just crazy <laughs> and then of course when you do a little blending solution that's going to break it up if we just kind of tap that on there we're just going to dry this one is it finished no but we've got other things to do i need to move on Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to do more pearl. But this is just pearl on Yupo and it's got a little bit of alcohol ink uh, thrown into that. But a great background, a really nice, beautiful, it's watercolory background. And that's really what I say to people, especially if you're a trained artist. Because let's face it, I am not a trained artist in any way. I am not a Dina Wakely, right? Color wheel, not my friend. Right? I don't even know it, to be honest. I just kind of go with it. I just go with whatever bottle is closer. Yeah, and that is why I choose things that are like, oh my God, it's going to be horrible. But my favorite color is brown, so what's the worst thing that can happen? Yeah, you I get your favorite. My favorite color. So I have no risk in my brain, but I do understand that when it comes to working with alcohol ink, it is the most forgiving medium you'll ever play with. It really is. If you don't like something, just put another layer on top. You're only as good as your next layer with this because it's just going to kind of move out of the way. Now, if it comes to glossy cardstock, though, that alcohol ink cardstock, you don't have as much playtime. So if you've only ever used ink with glossy paper, you are selling yourself short on this medium because this absorbs every bit of color that we give it. You don't get that same play time that you do on a synthetic substrate, right? You know exactly what I mean. Even though it's glossy. It's glossy. Glossy is the most porous of any paper ever. Glossy is the most porous. Yep. So if you have, I'll just use the same sludgy ink tool. We we'll use a little bit of celestial. Okay. It's just like photos. It's, it's got to suck back. it up. Exactly. It's a, so that you I mean, they did a clay coated paper because a clay coated paper was really designed to absorb a stamped ink really, really well for people that wanted to stamp on glossy. So here we go with just some um, Yupo alcohol ink cardstock. And on your first layer, it's going to be pretty much the same. You're not going to notice a difference. You're going to be like, hmm, hmm, okay, I'm good with that. Well, now both of them are beautiful, and you can see just even on that. You get that great little sparkle and shine. But it's when you want to start just throwing caution to the wind and throwing colors on there, that's where things can go horribly wrong if you're only working on glossy, right? So if I take some color and I go on to Yupo, it's just going to start replacing that color. If I go on the cardstock, it's just going to start to absorb that color. So right away, we're starting to see that's still pink. This is getting a little muddy, okay? But if I keep going, 
Again, I wouldn't normally do it, but you have to understand the paper portion. If I drip on some color, we're gonna get beautiful wicking with Yupo. And if I start dripping on color, we're still gonna get wicking of the ink, but it's start, starting to get even muddier. Now, the more color you put on the top of it, let's, let's just go into something totally don't ever do that. Take a little bit of that color. We'll even go in with a little bit darker. Take a little bit of denim. Everything we should not do that I'm doing. You'll get it. Because it's really important to understand that different substrates are just gonna react a little bit differently. So this one is going to just start showing up whatever colors I just stamped, the orange, the blue, all of that. This one, all of muddy. my colors are just gonna to start to muddy up, right? So it's just important to understand that at first when you're working with it, you may think, oh, it's exactly the same, but it's how many layers you wanna go, how much play you wanna give it. <clears throat> That's what's gonna determine reaction, bleaching, yeah. right? And so Yupo as well, if you didn't want something, we could just go in and we can remove most of our artwork on Yupo and we can start again. Right? It's like the creative dry erase board. Yeah. This, this is not coming off. Whether I put <laughs> blending solution or anything on there. Okay? That's the alcohol paper? This is alcohol cardstock, glossy cardstock, yeah. compared to Yupo. So now I want to introduce you to some new substrates in the yeah. alcohol world. Because that's another pretty awesome thing. As much as we love glossy paper <coughs> and Yupo and all of that, I'm always on the search for something else, something different. And if you are interested in alcohol inks, uh, Sharon on the opposite corner of the booth. She's amazing. Painting, She's amazing. Mother of glory. She can <laughs> take alcohol in and just paint. She it's just does a dancing thing. It's, it's just fascinating to me. Um, I'm not an alcohol painter, so I will not be demonstrating that. Um, all right, so let's talk about some new subjects. We've got these guys. We have three new substrates as far as paper, and then I'll talk about hardcore board. So we've got just a black matte cardstock. We have silver sparkle, and we have a brush silver. Now, the nice thing about these substrates, there are, they're very, very different. First of all, the black cardstock is <coughs> ridiculous. It's just, is it glossy? Uh, no, no, it's matte black. So if you just want to feel it, it almost feels like rubbery paper, very smooth. You can use oxides on it. You can use yes, I'll go to Sharon after. You can paint on it. I use it mostly as a matte for my work. Uh, I can't really do alcohol ink on this. Sharon can. Sharon can make like these velvet smooth. Elvis paintings on it. I don't know what she does. But <laughs> oh, it's I, very smooth. My, my attempt of alcohol ink on it, and I'm sure it's here because I did bring it. It's, it it's the thing that looks like a bruise. I will go on Monday to share, and she has a demo on Monday. Which could be cool. It could be a cool background. Yeah, it's kind of ghosty. I have a little snow cap and ink, but I can't really get alcohol inks to do anything on this. Um, but it's an awesome matting paper. You're going to use it for your backgrounds. I love to just take this paper, especially if you're a card maker. I love that. What about the distress oxides? Oxides would work great on it. Yeah, they look like they would. The other ones we have, let me try to see Alan came in probably. So there we go. I've got these. All right. So this is the silver sparkle. Okay. This is a cardstock. This was the ideology deco sheet that we had a few years ago. And since then, been retired. Deco sheet is a vinyl, but right? it's that kind of peel and stick vinyl. This you can feel has a slight texture. Neither one of these are glitter, by the way. Both of these are a printed process. There's no glitter particles at all. Uh, so if you're a glitter phobe, you don't worry. Nothing will ever come off. Um, yeah. It's printed. There's no glitter on this. Oh. Um, so this is totally smooth. And if you feel it compared to deco sheet, which we thought was smooth, that's even smoother. So there is no glitter in this. It's a, it's a sparkle paper. It's never been this smooth. It can't. It's just ink. But it's a pretty awesome oh. process. So they can make it print all I just sparkly. need this on my face. Yeah. And it's paper. So, <laughs> it's cardstock. It's yeah. It's, it's an actual so cardstock. You can feel that it has a great thickness to it. Yeah, because so we needed something that's going to hold up to alcohol paper. We couldn't yeah. just do regular paper, we're going to get lasagna because right. we want to uh, layer these. So let me just chop off a piece. I need my big scissors now from time. There we go. And we're going to do some alcohol inks on this. So let's take some colors. I just want to show you ink on this one first. If you put the alcohol pearls on this, you could, right? But pearl and sparkle, it doesn't really do anything different. That's all I'm saying. If you used alcohol pearls on this, what I'm going to show you, it doesn't do anything different. So to me, I don't I don't No, no. Sorry. Because the stretch is going to overpower the pearl. So why waste the pearl on that? That's what my 
crafty brain is thinking, but I'm sure somebody else would have a whole different reason why they want to use it. Okay. So let's just go in and add some color on there. If I'm going to start with a new background, I just change my felt. Right? It's just felt. Don't try to use a piece of felt to death because you will eventually get some sort of uh, mud to it. When I work at home, just say my creative process, I do use this part of my media mat to do this. Ink with cap, ink with cap, especially on the pearls, because the pearls will eventually get some of that color in the cap, and that color can transfer, so that's just me. Um, but because this set is not mine, it's Rangers. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, for demos, I'm sure they would expect that I'm not going to be, you know, as particular with this, right? So, let's just take off a bunch of different colors just so we can see uh, the background. And I, I'll throw in a pearl just for fun. Just why not? Let's see. The bottle is designed to actually be left open for up to a week. Whoa. Yeah, so um, if you can see with your camera, if you zoom in on that little blue one right there, yeah, you right? Can see it. as soon as you open a bottle of alcohol ink, the pressure in that bottle, the way the nib is designed, it's going to suck up a bead of ink into that nib, that nozzle, and that's what keeps the air from going back in. So every time you squeeze the ink, a little bead of ink is always just going to yeah. stop in there again. And when you use the ink and you set it there, a little bit of ink is going to suck up. You can see it's yeah, right it's on the top of the paint. So yeah. I was teaching it acts as a plug. Yep. So that's what you do. You just like leave them open and go for it. Pearls I wouldn't recommend because you need to shake them. That's, that's right. on you, literally. So, <laughs> all right. So for this one, I think I'm going to start just with some color onto the tool, and then we'll just go in and play. It's really nice that it's printed because I know that you know when it comes to doing sparkly stuff, I'm not a huge fan of a lot of sparkly stuff because I don't want sparkly stuff everywhere. Mm -hmm. I do like that. It's a really nice dark blue. You don't like sparkly I stuff either? Glitter. Yeah. <gasps> the only glitter I can handle yes. is rock candy because it's not static charged. So rock candy, you could throw it in the air, it's going to fall yeah. on the ground. Yeah. So, but other, yeah. yeah, any other glitters like it's everywhere. It sticks to your skin and your face and up your nose. <laughs> and, yeah. It's stuck in Oh yeah. my God. All right, so we're gonna go on sparkle. Now what you need to understand about this is when you ink it, you think you ruined it, okay? Don't freak your freak. Okay? We can still throw on some ink. It's still going to react, right? Same way we do with inks. I'm just gonna do some blues on this one, okay? So I love the fact that this is just gonna kind of act as that really uh, beautiful, quite unique substrate. Now, as it dries, that's when things are going to happen. And again, we can let it air dry or... Oh my God, the shimmer dry. is fantastic. <laughs> so once this dries, then you're going to get that sparkle. Oh out. my God. So like I said, don't freak your freak. Because you're going to ink it and you're like, oh my gosh, I did something wrong. This is not the right, this is not the right paper, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But see, once it dries, you get that sparkle. Now, just like any other kind of alcohol inkable paper, it is designed to be reactive. Okay, so I can still go in now with like blending solution and I can just get some of this color oh my God. to just start moving around. Okay. Oh my God. Boy, stop. Oh, wow. wow. Oh, that's just, crazy. Just get it to move. Just depends on the color choice that you what? have. Right? They say, oh yeah. Up. And this is how you create these kind of effects. Ink, blending solution, drip. So I'm gonna just let this dry. And normally I would wow. keep this upright at an angle so all that goo ends up down there. Otherwise the goo's gonna like end right in the middle of your project. There you go. So when I do like, I'll set it on something just to, cause you can see there's my sludge, right? So if you just do it and lay it back down, your sludge will be like right in your legs. Like, if you're gonna put something on it, who cares, right? But I'll just show you this when it dries. That you just get amazing. a really cool thing, and I love the fact that this paper remains reactive, and that's one of the things that Deco Sheet didn't do. You could alcohol ink it, but if you went back, you couldn't. It wouldn't rework because it was vinyl, right? It wasn't designed to do that. But, but this, this is, is this is actually just paper. This is paper. This is cardstock. Yeah, this is it's more than just paper. Yes, it's magic paper. Magic paper. Yeah, magic paper. If you do an embossing folder. This is oh. a 3D oh. embossing folder. Stop it. It I mean, like, go in and crack. You're killing me here. Break, so you can use any of your colors that you want. Actually, you're killing my bank account right now. <laughs> yeah. But the, it, even it, without the sparkle, the metallic look of it is amazing. I do it after, so by preference. I know. Because I never want to 
push down. Try to no, I never want to figure out what I'm trying to do, right? Because if I emboss it first and I try to color like it, I'm going to want like green beautiful. over this leaf and this over this, and it's like, yeah. don't overthink it. So I just eat the background and, and then do that. Yeah. And then like magic, yeah. like that leaf is going to be in the perfect spot of your just <laughs> yeah. nothing. It really is. Yeah, I think this should be wallpaper. Just a lot more exciting than that. But this was just an ink and drip. Oh Die cut that, paper punch, whatever you want to do on that. That is the sparkle, which is very cool. Now we have brush. Make no, you can't Why do we not have another metallic? I've got so many metallics. I've got metallic cardstock with ideology and a Brazilian colors now, which is great. We have foil paper, but this is a foil cardstock, right? A foil cardstock is really, really shiny. It's awesome, it's foily, but for me, for something a little bit more on the vintage side, I love this brush metallic. I just, it almost looks pearlescent to me, a little bit, it really does. But you can create some really cool industrial effects by taking an embossing folder, what I've done, emboss through it, and this one I embossed first because I'm gonna use the texture to my advantage, all right? So now I'm just going to place my foil, even though I'm gonna go black and brown and all that. So. All right, let's see, let's do that color of a sludge. <laughs> Let's use brown, 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 and brown. Now let's throw in something else. I'm gonna do a little smolder. Smolder is like mushroom alcohol ink with pearl. And I'm gonna use a little mineral. Right. Yeah. I am gonna use pearl. I'm gonna use a little bow, right? So I'm gonna use smolder and mineral. Right? This is like a smoky. I was like, maybe she just sounds heavy. People like stand in the cosmetic stores because his name is like Canada, right? I started out at Home Depot, right? And I looked at paint names, I'm like, they're cool, but like they don't have a feeling. And then you're they're not Tim enough. Like, you go into like a cosmetic store and the names are like, whoa, I don't know what it is, what it does, but I love it. Hey guys. Um, I love the names of it, so it's like intriguing, smoldering, envy. I don't know what that is, but I want to use it. Right, creativity. So that's where I got the inspiration for these names, because it does. It's going to go feel. Okay. It's just proved that for me. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Nobody knew peeled paint. Now we know it's like green. Yeah. Old paper. You know, fire brick, mustard seed, fruit raspberry. Yeah. But back in the day, you're like, oh, this is peeled paint. Like, what color is peeled paint? That's not a color name. I'm like, oh, it's a feeling. Good. You know it's going to be distress. Yeah. All right. So this one, again, we're going to go in. Check out all of these, and I'm going to ink this particular background. So here's something to know about alcohol ink. All alcohol inks, you know, they do contain. That's a nice little but that one felt. They do contain a resin, and that resin is really important to understand that that resin is going to have a specific drying time as well, and you can use that drying time to your advantage. So I've got some pearls and some inks. I'm going to throw a little bit I will of try to get there. to Dina's too, but not later on. I'm just going to go in and just add the color of goodness. Brown. <laughs> or black, or whatever. And I'm stamping this, and the reason is because this was embossed. Right. So I need to get ink everywhere. Right. Well, you'll hit the high points, which is what we're going to do next, right? So as this dries, I'm just going to start stamping that out. And you can see that as each layer dries, when you go back over it with a layer, it's going to start reacting. And once I feel that it's kind of grabbing onto my ink tool, that's when I just start doing the dance. It's beautiful. And this is where you start to get kind of this eroded vibe, if you will. And then you can take a paper towel, a cloth, and then you're really going to hit the high points and kind of bring out the shine of those rivets. Wow. And that's just pretty cool to be able to change a paper from... Oh, it just looks like it's stupid good. Um, it's, a, it's just, it's a little bit, yeah, it's like, it's a little, that pearl in there, you'll see when you pass it on, it just, it changes, because if you've ever done antiquing with alcohol ink, right, we, you know, you probably use mushroom or black or whatever, we still get a grunge, but it's a very translucent grunge, something about that little bit of pearl, you don't have to do it all in pearl, just that little additive is, is going to take that to a different level, it's going to give it that eroded factor, it's a little bit different, so I do encourage you when you, uh, get some pearls, play around, right? Play around with them as is, 
by themselves, see how they work, see how you like it, and then just start throwing them in with some colors because they will act different. But what I want you to really understand, don't expect them to be a mixative because they aren't, right? If you expect what you know of like, oh, I'm going to do that, when I hit blending solution, it's going to break apart, it won't. They're not mixatives. They are alcohol pearls. And that to me is, is what I'm so excited about when it comes to a new release is, you know, we've had alcoholics for many, many years. I think now it's been 10 years we've had the e line which is quite shocking. So to have a new oh, kind of ink yeah, to work with these inks, it's like, okay, that's pretty 